Yo, 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 yo. Welcome back to the house where we talk news, celebrities, and hot topics. Listen, we're Housewives of uh, Potomac Season 8 Reunion Part 1. Let's go ahead and get into some things. Uh, listen, we have uh, Giselle and Candace Diller Bassett. So Candace Diller Bassett had a whole breakdown. She started crying when she was talking about her relationship with one half of reasonable and evil, barely reasonable and evil. Um, she was crying about her relationship with Robin and whatnot. And then Giselle was like, oh, my God, cue the waterworks. Here comes the waterworks. Somebody get her a triangle and then started laughing at that situation. Right. I guess Candace kind of felt like all she wants from her friends is acknowledgement. That's all she wants is acknowledgement because Candace feels like Robin perpetuated other people's storylines while trying to downplay her own real, very real storyline of Juan Dixon allegedly cheating on her with the Canadian mistress, allegedly, 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 right? And all Candace wants is acknowledgement. You demand us tell our stories and yet you don't tell your own. What's up with that, Robin? And so while Candace was talking about that, she kind of had, you know, a mini breakdown. And then Giselle came in being a mean girl talking about some cue the waterworks. And my whole thing is, okay, fuck the show. If I'm crying and I feel like I really don't cry like that, like I may cry like in front of my friends. I cry all the time in private, but in front of my friends, I cry like not that often. Not that often. I'll give my friends once every other year to see me cry. Okay. If you take a moment. So for me, and I know Candace cries all the time. And I think that's where the butt of the joke was is because she's always crying and it was giving fake tears and yada, yada, yada. But to me, if I'm crying, if I'm at my most vulnerable and there is salt water tears coming from my goddamn eyeballs, my eye ducts, and you fix your lips to laugh at me, we can never be friends after that. We can never be friends. We can never be friends uh, after that because why the hell is you laughing at me at my most vulnerable state? I'm being vulnerable. I'm crying. I'm having a breakdown. I'm having a mini breakdown. I'm mentally all over the place. I have an emotional state of mind. And you're really going to laugh at me? We could never be friends after that. If I was Candace Dillabesset, I would have said, you know what, Andy Cohen? Remember when I said I was down to move forward for the sake of the show? Fuck that. Fuck this hoe. Fuck this show. And I quit. Did I call Gisela Ho? I'm not calling Gisela Ho. I'm just saying in general, hypothetically, if I was into the situation and if it was a random person, you know, laughing at me, I would have been like, fuck this ho and fuck this show. Okay. Because y'all is not going to have me be ridiculed and bullied. And yes, we can go tit for tat, tit for tat, tit for tat. Well, Candace said that Giselle is evil and dwindling uterus and that she's an imp. Y'all, I didn't even know what an imp was. I had to Google what the fuck is an imp because I didn't saw that clip so many times of Giselle talking about some Candace said that Giselle is evil. Giselle is an imp. Giselle is this. I'm like, what the hell is an imp? An imp is a little demon, a small mischievous or mischievous devil, demon, little devil, goblin, elf. Okay. I'm like, what the hell? What is an imp? like a goblin that be on like them gothic buildings that be on the corner of them uh, gothic buildings them cement buildings a little devil goblin i'm trying to figure out when when in the hell did candace call this lady an imp but anyways i say that to say we can go tit for tat and if we call out what giselle does as being mean or mean-spirited because even andy said it onto the reunion he was like giselle that was a little bit mean like girl like come on now you know what i mean then you have all of Giselle's fans talking about some. But when Candace said that she had a dwindling uterus, but when Candace said this and a third, but when Candace said she was an imp and she was evil and she was this and she was that, 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 that this tit for tat. Okay, yeah. Candace was harsh. When Candace said, you white looking woman and your proximity to privilege, I rebuke this devil off of this reunion stage. When she did all of that last year, Okay, was it harsh? Was it mean? Yes, it was. Granted, it was a response. It was a reaction. Candace, don't come out the gate just going to fuck in on your ass. Okay, you had to have done something to her. Okay, in order for her to call you evil and uh, uh, an imp and a little demon. 
Okay, dwindling uterus. Instead of focusing on your dwindling uterus, you were focused on me and my husband. But anyways, um, yes, those words do sting. Arguably, I kind of feel like Karen, Wendy, and Candace cut the girls down to the white meat. They really, really do. Broken whore from Hampton University and Jamal Bryant lives in the phone and uh, you know, sing sing and uh, STI hot box, dwindling uterus. Little imp from down the block. <laughs> yes, I feel like those three, they have the best reads. They have the best comebacks. They know how to shake the girls down. They are the best with their words, those three. And the other girls can't handle it. They, they just can't handle it. And I'm not saying that they're right all the time because their words are hurtful. And yes, they sting. And yes, they can be mean-spirited. We know that, okay? Given. In this moment, though, Candace did not say, I, now maybe I'm wrong. But up until the moment where Giselle started, uh, what was it, laughing at Candace's pain, what did Candace call her? In this moment. Then all of a sudden, after Giselle gets done laughing, talking about some cue the waterworks and go grab sis a cry angle, that's when you have Candace Dilla Bassett talking about some she's a fucking bitch. She's a bitch. And I don't want to be associated with this bitch. These are her words, not mine. And the words got really harsh. Then Giselle says, oh, oh, uh, you know, the name calling. She called her a big ass lie. She's a lie. Right. Then Giselle goes, oh, the name calling. She's calling me names. Is it time for the name calling? As if Candace just walked onto the stage like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna call you a lie. And I'm gonna call you a little monster, a little demon. And I'm gonna call you a, uh, you know, whatever the case may be, a, a, an effing bitch. Or did that come after you laughed at her pain? Did that come after you said, cue the waterworks? I mean, I'm just saying. I mean, I'm just saying. It was a very unbecoming moment, especially for a former first lady. Where is the love and the compassion? I mean, I just find it so hard to believe that Giselle is this much of an ice princess. I, I find it this hard to believe that Giselle is this much of a cold hearted human being. I mean, she was a first lady at one point in time. Where is the love and compassion for humanity? Where is it? Where is your scooter? We all want to know what the hell is going on. So anyways, Giselle was really irking on my nerves. Uh, moving right along. Then we have Chris's uh, limp penis. You know, Robin is bringing up the picture. So let me go ahead and give you guys a little context of the situation. There was a lady that came out last year. Originally to Tasha K. She came out to some other bloggers too. And basically let it be known that she allegedly was having relations with Chris Bassett, Candace's husband. Okay. Saying that they were having an affair. Now, what was interesting, and to me the biggest red flag, was the fact that when she would go and do these interviews and go talk to bloggers, she was extremely fixated on her, um, her thoughts and opinions on Candace. When she would be talking to these bloggers, she really wasn't too much, you know, focused on talking about the man who was allegedly fucking her, that impregnated her, allegedly, allegedly, but she was so fixated on dragging Candace. I wonder why that is. I wonder if it's because she's a mental patient who's a fan of the show and is desperate for a click and a view and a like and a, a, a blog post. You know what I mean? You guys get what I'm saying? So it was a very interesting situation. And so she ended up recanting her statement and said that it was a lie. It was a lie. It was a lie. She went to all the bloggers and sent them these random nudes. OK, these nude photos. And these new photos were allegedly she was claiming that these were Chris's nudes and this was his brown dick. The reason why she was sending out these news, uh, nude photos was to corroborate her story. Now, allegedly, these nudes was of a white man and his limp penis, which I think that means he was soft. And allegedly, the penis is brown because notably, Candace has said that Chris Bassett has a brown penis as a white man. So that's uh, the first thing. So. They even sent it to, she even sent it to Reasonable and Evil, right? Uh, so that they could talk about it on their podcast, which they did end up doing. What's interesting about the situation is I don't think that there were face uh, pictures. There were no faces in the pictures, meaning you could possibly see the person's body and the person's dick, but you could not see the person's face. And how did Cardi B say? No face, no case, which means if there's no face to the body, if there's no face to the penis, then the penis doesn't belong to the face. If there's no face, there's no case. If the glove doesn't fit, you must acquit. Okay. 
she is innocent he is innocent chris bassett is innocent so there is no face therefore there is no case along with that there were several bloggers who went ahead and said i mean there was no mole we could match up to a mole that was on chris there's no tattoo in these nudes that we could match up with chris bassett there was nothing to match up nothing to verify nor confirm that this brown dick actually belongs to chris bassett do i feel like robin and giselle are conspiring at their homes making it seem like okay let's come up with a plot to deflect from us and put the uh scandal on candace and her husband do i feel like it's that intentional and explicit no however robin for you to be fixated on chris best says alleged limp penis pics and yet you still really never gave us any real detail about how juan dixon was putting his credit card down for the canadian mistress allegedly shows me that there is some sort of a conspiracy to constantly throw things in Candace's face to deflect from what's going on in your real life. The conspiracy isn't intentional, but it's like an unsaid thing that we're going to try to throw everything in, in Candace's face so that nobody talks about us. A really good example, and I don't think enough people talk about this, was the boombox. Remember when Robin Dixon and her silly self, they were in dinner I forgot what country they were in, but I think they were on vacation. I think this was last year or maybe this year. No, it was last year. Candace Dillard Bassett did an Instagram live, I think. And she was kind of talking shit a little bit about the girls. And Robin saw that Instagram live, brought her Bluetooth cheap ass speaker. Her, Let me not go in because everyone has that speaker. But she brought that JBL speaker to the dinner table, sat it in the middle of the table and exposed Candace for what she was saying about the women in the group, right? What Candace said on her Instagram live was not a secret. So it's not like Robin was bringing something up that wasn't publicly known or publicly said, right? She just wanted the ladies to realize that Candace had said these things. But if you really break that situation down, it's another example of Robin trying to put someone else on blast or trying to expose them, but yet keeping secret about what Juan Dixon is doing behind the scenes. Another example, uh, Candace Diller brought it up in last night's episode was the fact that, OK, uh, you know, Karen is bringing up this Georgetown lady. Now you want to bring up blue eyes. You always want to expose somebody else. But you never want to expose your husband. Another example is when Giselle and Robin kept talking about the fact on multiple occasions and people keep saying that Wendy overreacted, that Wendy overreacted to that situation. No. Robin and Giselle had numerous of conversations, three, four conversations behind Wendy's back about these possible Eddie rumors and how Eddie was fucking a white woman at his law firm behind Wendy's back and had a bastard child. And that's the reason why Wendy uh, became so insecure that she went to the doctor's office and got her a BBL, some titties and a new face. Went down to Kendra's boutique and got her some human hair lace frontals went down to the Saks Fifth Avenue and the Neiman Marcus to go get her some cute ass outfits. What happened to Wendy? She's so different. Her personality is different. She's dressing different. She has titties. She has ass. She has a new attitude like Patti LaBelle. She's a new woman. Is it because Eddie fathered a bastard child with a white woman? You did not have one conversation. They didn't have two conversations. They had multiple, several conversations about that situation before ever confronting Wendy on it. It's obvious that you want that to be a storyline. If you did not, you wouldn't be talking about it on a multitude of occasions. I say that to say... Those two are constantly always trying to deflect. They want to put other people in their business on blast, but then want to sell their business two years after the fact for $5 on Patreon. I think it's a shame and a scandal, and I think they deserve discipline for what they did to uh, us. But they only spent five seconds on the limp penis pics because everyone on the cast basically says that the alleged mistress has no credibility. Okay, then we talk about Juan not showing up and... Juan deleting text messages and pictures and DMs from his phone and 
Juan supposedly being there for Robin and Juan not having a job, but he's supportive and Juan this and Juan that. And we had a whole segment on Juan. And then Robin really did fix her lips to say that Juan Dixon is an interesting character and Bravo should do a two hour special on him. And what I have to say about that is, why would we give Juan Dixon a two hour special to get to know him more when Juan Dixon doesn't even want to sit behind you? When Juan Dixon barely wants to even do scenes with you? When Juan Dixon doesn't even want to pick up the phone when you call. When Juan Dixon doesn't even want to take your side against some of the other ladies in the group. You know, it's interesting because this narrative kept being pushed to the audience that Juan Dixon is too nice. I'm such of a nice guy. I'm too nice. I shouldn't have gone to the hotel room and put my credit card down so that girl could have a place to stay for the night. I'm too nice. Why is it that Juan Dixon is nice to everybody but his wife? Why is it that Juan Dixon shows up for everybody except for his wife? Granted, we don't see them. We're not a fly on the wall in the house 24-7. We only get to see what we see. So I can only comment on what I see. However, from what I see, why is he nice to everybody else, but he's not nice to his own wife? Why does he have the energy? Why can he muster up the courage and the energy to get into his car, drive to D.C., put his credit card down for some random mistress, allegedly, and spend money? but can't get into his car, drive to or get on a plane and go to New York, Juan won't get on a free flight to New York, check into a free hotel, and sit behind Robin onto the Real Housewives of Potomac Season 8 Reunion Part 1 to make money. Juan will spend money on a stranger, but won't make money with his wife. Catch that tea. Okay, moving right along. Uh, I hope she was being sarcastic about a two-hour special. Like, really, sis? Um, did Giselle accuse Chris Bassett of sexual assault? Okay. So Candace is dying on this hill. Um, that Giselle... I said that right, right? Candace is dying on this hill that Giselle accused Chris Bassett of sexual assault. Sexual assault is really strong of a term, right? But... I was like, okay, I kind of see it because we did get this situation where this year Giselle made it known that Chris Bassett made her go in a hotel room and it made her feel uncomfortable. Excuse me, come again? Pardon me? He made you do what? Okay, so which one is it? Because this season, right, and this has been a two-season storyline, Last season, it was he asked me, and it made me feel uncomfortable. This season, you said he made me. You saying that somebody made you is essentially saying somebody forced you. And you saying that a married man forced you to go to a hotel room, and it made you feel uncomfortable, allows people's imaginations to run wild, and it creates a narrative That Chris Bassett somehow wanted to do something inappropriate to you or with you. In that context, you're kind of alluding that Chris Bassett may have had intent to maybe sexually assault or sexually harass or sexually do something. Okay. Um. But I was like, uh, Candace, I don't really know. I don't really know. Granted, you know, finally we did get some clarification. Um you know, Giselle ended up saying that she did not mean to say he made me go into a hotel room. She meant to say he asked me to go into a hotel room. Okay. Finally, she made a distinction and she corrected herself. Thank God. Okay. I'll give Giselle a point for that. However, I also recall a time where I think it was Debbie or Ashley Darby told us that Debbie said that Chris Bassett slapped her on the ass. And I do remember Giselle vaguely perpetuating that situation and repeating it as if it was gospel. So no, Giselle did not directly accuse Chris Bassett of slapping somebody in the ass, but she did repeat the accusation as if it was true. Therefore, indirectly kind of, you know, accusing him of sexual assault. I kind of see where Candace is coming from. I kind of do. I'm not going to lie about the situation, but y'all let me know. Did Giselle Bryant accuse Chris Bassett of sexual assault or not? I have to go ahead and hurry up. My computer is dying. Gordon says hello to Mia's boyfriend. I just kind of feel like Mia not shit. Um, and then Wendy says that Gordon told her that Ink 
wanted to pick up who he believes to be his son. The son that Mia is raising with Gordon, right? I'm not going to be long-winded on this. I feel like there's a lot of people on Twitter that are outraged that um, Wendy would even bring up this situation as it pertains to her child, Mia's child, right? I think a lot of people forgot that Gordon actually brought this up um, the previous episode during the finale. And what Wendy was really talking about was not really, she, she wasn't really breaking the news about the child possibly not being Gordon's, but she was breaking the news that Ink wanted to pick up the child. That's how adamant he is about the child being his. I, I, I find it to be interesting that more people are outraged at Wendy than they are at Mia's chaotic and irresponsible family planning. Mia is a 39-year-old woman. Again, she's accomplished. She may not be the richest person, but she's a person of means and she has resources. A 39-year-old wife, mother, accomplished, intelligent, businesses, money, means, resources. And you mean to tell me that there's a question of paternity when it comes to your son? Huh? What? That's weird. Okay. It just gave real hood to me. And the thing about it is, is that Mia is purposely sowing a seed of chaos in this love triangle in order to maintain the love triangle. Mia likes the fact that Ink, Mr. Ink, the side nigga of 10 years, is in love with her, is obsessed with her. She loves the passionate love affair that they have. Loves it. She loves the fact that Ink thinks that her son is his son. I think she also loves the fact that her husband, Gordon, is over here bending over backwards and acting like a doormat, talking about how he let her cheat and let her be in love with the uh, 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 side nigga. And the son may not be mine, but I'm going to raise him like he's mine. I think deep down inside, everyone knows who the real father is. But I think the reason why Mia doesn't want to actually get concrete evidence and really lay the rumors to rest is because she wants to maintain the chaos in order to have the husband that's a doormat and that's going to bend over backwards and allow her to walk all over him and also have her love affair onto the side too. I think Mia's irresponsible family planning deserves more outrage than Wendy ever bringing it up onto the show. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about the situation in the comments down below. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to create a great day. Bye.